everyone. I'm Scott Keevan. I'm the Aquatic Invasive Species Coordinator with the Ash and County Land and Water Conservation Department. Uh, so we're joined today by uh, some folks from Ash and County and then also Bayfield County Land and Water Conservation Department and then also uh, members of the Northwoods Cooperative Weed Management Area. Uh, so what we're doing today is purple loosestrife biocontrol. Uh, so we're down um, near Hotel Schwamigan, uh, right at Ashland, Wisconsin. And we're going to be uh, digging up some plants, uh, purple loosestrife plants. And we'll be doing the digging and then they will be potted uh, in pots. And uh, we'll add some peat moss and fertilizer to them. And we will raise uh, the purple loosestrife until they are uh, right about like 18 inches or so. And then we will add um, about 8 to 10 beetles uh, to each individual pot uh, with the purple loosestrife plants and then we will let them uh, reproduce and uh, usually takes about like uh, right about, uh, about 28 days or so and at that point in the ball game uh, when you add eight to ten beetles per pot uh, typically they'll turn out to be uh, reproduced and, and produce about 800 to 1,000 uh, Gallerocella beetles so then we will uh, take those beetles and we will take them back to uh, wetlands or um, other areas that have high densities of, of purple loosestrife and we will release uh, those beetles um, into uh, into those areas and they will consume uh, the purple loosestrife and kind of the ultimate goal is to uh, uh, basically just to have the beetles uh, once they are released to have them uh, chew up on the on the purple loosestrife plant so it's unable to flower um, so that way it's not uh, able to produce seeds anymore um, and even better than that, sometimes they are so effective they, they can actually um, chew up so much of the, the leaves uh, that it'll actually kill off the purple loosestrife plant. So that's kind of the um, purple loosestrife biocontrol 101 there. Okay, so identifying purple loosestrife. Uh, really, when you start a purple loosestrife biocontrol project, you want to start, you have to kind of know where the purple loosestrife is, you know, before you go out. Um, and you're actually going to be picking it when it's quite, or digging it out um, before it is really very big at all. Um, so you really have to know where it already is. Uh, smaller plants, uh, they all are going to have uh, what we call a square stem. There's edges on two sides. Um, so if you feel it, you can definitely feel a square stem. The leaves are opposite and they have no petiole so they connect directly to the stem and um, they also are 90 degrees um, from each other so these are going in this direction and these are going 90 degrees in a different direction and then these are going 90 degrees from the one below it um, so those are all identification ways to identify it it also has entire leaves um, that are rather narrow um, so you can see they don't have any teeth along the edges. Uh, and this one we can see that it has been chewed up quite a bit. So there have been some Gullerocella beetles here. Alrighty, so we will get started here uh, with the actual digging process. So uh, we found our purple loosestrife. That's really the kind of the main first step uh, once you get your crew gather, uh, gathered and get all the equipment all set. So with that, we'll uh, start digging this one out, and this one is actually a pretty big uh, blue stripe plant, so this one, if we get all of it, uh, that should actually be about the perfect size for one, uh, for one pot. So we'll start to dig this out now. and miracle Grow uh, just to make it kind of this, um, you don't want it too liquidy, but you also don't want it, um, you know, too, uh, too soft either. So kind of, you know, kind of uh, add enough where it kind of resembles um, its natural uh, home. So like a, like a wetland or uh, what the conditions would be, let's say along a lake or along a river uh, or a wetland that, uh, that it would thrive in. So, uh, so that's what we got here. So we got it all uh, mixed up already, so the easiest thing to do is just to take uh, one of these pots here and you can get these at any like a landscaping place or uh, pretty much any garden center. A lot of times after they're done uh, using them, they'll give these out uh, for free. So that's how we collected uh, these ones here. So the first thing that we'll do is just kind of add, I would say about 
maybe two to four inches uh, on the bottom, and then we'll add the plant, and then we'll kind of pack it around nice and tight. We got a nice kind of base for uh, for the purple loosegrave plant. So we got uh, just a few inches on the bottom, and then I put just kind of a, a small hole so it can really uh, take root and, and really start to uh, to grow and thrive uh, in this pond. So we have that in there already, and then again we have our purple loosegrave plant, and um, as you can see, we took out. Um, you know, some of the sand and debris, uh, sticks, that kind of stuff that were around uh, this rootstock and, and the roots here. Uh, but we also left a fair amount of it too, because obviously it was growing well in these conditions, so we didn't want to, uh, you know, totally uh, disrupt it of its, of its home there. So now well, that we got the, uh, the pot about uh, a couple inches full here, we'll actually add the plant. Some pretty good growth already um, outside of the plant, and then it'll basically just add uh, more of this peat moss and Miracle Grow mixture. And uh, um, you want to pack it relatively tight, but not super tight. Uh, we want to have uh, our Gallerocella larvae. Uh, we want them to be able to, uh, you know, crawl off of the plants and, and uh, around the uh, the actual soil. So. Alrighty, so this is what it'll look like uh, when it's complete. So you can see we got uh, the actual plant and obviously the root stock and roots would be underneath it. Uh, we got our soil mixture and we got just enough uh, peat moss and then the uh, miracle Girl mixture uh, right here. So we have, uh, I basically put it so it's kind of flush in line with like the start of the purple loosestrife plant. Uh, I don't want to go too high, you know, something like that. We don't want to bury the leaves and, and most of the stems. Uh, but just having it, you know, basically flush with uh, where the roots would end and then the stems uh, would start to begin um, is, a, is a good spot to do. And then uh, you want to make sure to, to leave just a few inches uh, at the top of the pot too, give it enough room to, uh, to really grow out um, and for the beetles to, uh, to walk around and the larvae to uh, use the soil. Our setup is all complete, so the only thing that's missing is now we need some Gallerocella beetles uh, to, um, to actually do the collection and then also uh, to bring them over to the visitor center and get them on our purple loosestrife uh, plants. So uh, that's what we're going to do today. I'd like to just show off real quick this uh, lovely, uh, very, very high-tech, very fancy uh, piece of equipment. Uh, it's just a two-liter bottle that we uh, washed out uh, with a lot of water, make sure that um, uh, that there's no you know water or, or uh, pop or anything like that, anything uh, in the bottle. So this is actually what we use to collect our beetles with. Um, as you can see, we just chopped off uh, the top of it and then just flipped it uh, inside out and put the uh, uh, the actual opening uh, down at the center of the bottle. So uh, basically what we do is go up to uh, purple blue stripe plants that would have Gallerocella beetles on there and just give them just kind of a quick tap uh, and collect the beetles uh, directly into uh, this bottle here. You can see this pair right here and they're actually literally mating uh, as we speak. So um, we are going to collect uh, this pair of Gallerocella beetles and um, one pair of Gallerocella beetles. Uh, each beetle that you add can basically produce about a, uh, up to about a thousand or so beetles uh, when, uh, when they're able to mate. This is Tim Erickson. Uh, I'm an intern with Ashton County Land and Water Conservation Department this summer um, and I'm out here helping Scott with the collection of Gallerocella beetles for the Purple Loose Strife Biocontrol. Um, as you can see on this plant here, there are actually several uh, mating pairs on it. You can see one pair right up there. Um, and as you look further down into the plant, you can see a few more beetles. Um, another pair right there. And with, our, with the two liter bottle collection method Scott talked about, it's uh, as easy as just kind of shaking them in. Um, some fall definitely a lot easier than others, but yeah, sometimes you can pop the leaf off and kind of brush them, brush them in, but they fall right down the hole there. Hi, my name is Kelly. I'm an intern with the Lashen Land and Water Conservation Department, and today we are doing biocontrol and finding some Gallerocella beetles that eat the purple loosestrife plant. 
So here we have a plant, uh, purple loosestrife, and you can see there's some beetles on here, so I'm just going to tap them in. And they're not coming off, so I'm just going to take the plant off and put it right in there. And we got some beetles. There's a couple more on here, but we're going to keep looking. starting to see some of these plants actually have uh, eggs already, which is kind of kind of neat to see. Uh, so they're actually reproducing and then uh, laying their eggs. So we will kind of zoom up on that uh, so you have a chance to see that. So you can kind of see that they're kind of a, a whitish or, or kind of a, a light brown uh, color for the eggs. And that's pretty stereotypical of them uh, to, to uh, just lay the eggs right on the, on the leaves. Um, Alrighty, so we are back here at the Northern Great Lakes Visitor Center uh, farmhouse here, and you can see we have our purple loosestrife biocontrol set up. Uh, so we have all of the pools uh, full of water, and then we have all kinds of pots set up as well. And then within that we have our nets, and also uh, we're uh, in the process right now of putting beetles uh, into each individual pot. Um, so we've already hit all of these, uh, all of the pots on this stretch. Um, so we'll give you just a quick demo of how we do this. Uh, so it's a pretty simple process here. Uh, normally with very mature purple loosestrife plants, typically we would add uh, eight to 10 beetles per pot. Uh, these ones are a little bit on the smaller side, so we'll probably back that down just a little bit and probably add uh, about six or seven beetles per pot. Uh, but again, on, on fully mature plants, we would definitely do uh, 8 to 10 beetles. Some of these we've done just a couple more, uh, right in that 8 to 10 range, and some of the, the smaller uh, purple loosestrife plants and uh, pots that, uh, that they would be in, uh, we're adding just a couple less beetles. So with that being said, uh, Kelly's going to add uh, six beetles to this pot. This is kind of a, a medium-sized uh, purple loosestrife plant, so we'll add uh, six beetles to this one. So she's got them all counted out, and we will add those there. And you notice she uh, uh, put it right in the center of the actual net, and then we always like to make sure that it falls down all the way to the bottom uh, of the pot. And uh, you can see the leaves actually got kind of um, intertwined with, uh, with the purple loosestrife that is down at the bottom of the pot right now. So that is perfect, and now this one is fully uh, potted, and we can uh, just tie it up. Perfect, this is Tim and Scott checking back in. Uh, we're outside of Highbridge, Wisconsin right now, releasing these beetles today. Um, and we are in a uh, kind of a wetland here, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of purple loosestrife, relatively kind of medium to high density. So this is a really good uh, candidate for a, uh, a Gallaricella beetle release site. So we found a bunch of loosestrife uh, right here and it's really scattered uh, throughout this whole wetlands. We're uh, doing this release site uh, right now. A couple days we've had adult beetles um, uh, from this year that are just starting to hatch. So it's time to, uh, to take them out to the field like what we're doing today, and uh, here we are. So we are going to um, release our adult beetles, and then you'll also notice that there's a lot of uh, larvae uh, from the um, from the beetles as well that uh, within the next probably, I would say, two or three days, maybe even a week, uh, they'll start to form adult beetles. So they'll really start to hatch and uh, be full adult beetles. So, um, the, the newly hatched beetles, um, hopefully had a chance to see, they're usually kind of a, a bright orange color compared to the adult beetles that we collected um, uh, a few weeks back, about three weeks back or so, uh, they were much darker, kind of a, a dark tan or like a brownish color, and then they had uh, two small black stripes along the side. Uh, these would be a lot more um, kind of like an orange color, so you can tell that it's uh, the new, newly hatched beetles uh, from this year. So there it is, again, kind of that, uh, that bright orange color to it.
and much, much lighter in coloration uh, than the adult beetles that we collected uh, earlier on this June. So that is a newly hatched beetle, and that's uh, exactly why we do this biocontrol process, to produce a lot more of these guys and to help uh, control purple loosestrife in Ashland County. We're back out here at another site uh, right outside of Marengo, Wisconsin, right off Highway 13. Um, we introduced two new pots here. There's plenty of loosestrife around. Uh, as you can see, we've been going around and pulling some to add more food source to the pots here for these larvae that are hatching currently. Um, and then along with that, there are a few taller plants we put these pots next to. We kind of try to interweave these with the, uh, the introduced stock and the plant that's already in there, just so that as it grows, um, these beetles can move out and are already on a live plant uh, to continue growing and then spread through this entire wetland. Alrighty, so as we're kind of wrapping up our day here, we got all of our beetles picked. And uh, a question that we get all the time is, why do we do purple loosestrife biocontrol? And we do it for a lot of different reasons. Uh, obviously, purple loosestrife is well known to crowd out our native uh, vegetation uh, along rivers and streams and creeks uh, and, of course, lakes and wetlands as well. Um, and at the end of the day, we, uh, we do it because we want to uh, protect our waters uh, from purple loosestrife and other invasive species. So uh, the special place behind me is, uh, is definitely near and dear to all of our hearts, especially in northern Wisconsin. And uh, that's what we do it for, to, uh, to protect our waters. So we'll let you get a shot of that. Hello, this is Ramona Shackelford of the Northwoods Cooperative Weed Management Area. So here we are at the Sioux River um, and the Sioux River Slough. As you can see, there is a lot of purple loose strife. So when we were doing uh, the biocontrol project, we did bring some canoes out here and uh, left some of the pots uh, for three weeks. Uh, in the Sioux Slough to help control um, this purple loose strife here. We um, are hoping that some of those beetles that came off the plants that we left uh, are able to establish their own populations and control the purple loose strife a little better. In this area, if you look around, we got purple loose strife all over. Um, and these are the beetles around here that are looking a little dead um, are being affected by the biocontrol beetles. Um, but we're going to add one pot over here. Um, and this pot, there's not a lot of beetles up on the top, but uh, there's probably a lot of larvae in there and the beetles will be hatching soon. So um, I'm going to take it out and then we'll mark where it is and leave it there for a few weeks and come back. Um, after the beetles are able to disperse in the area. So, here we go. <laughs> <laughs>